my goodness, I just gave myself a mom manicure, if you know what I mean. It's like, it's the worst thing ever. I was in the middle of it drying and crisis. So I had to go take care of my two year old and now I'm like, I don't have time to take it off. So it just is what it is. Anyway, yes, I just got out of the shower in the middle of the afternoon because Josh and I are gonna film a Q and A here in just a bit and then we're going away to his brother's house for the evening. They live almost an hour away, so it doesn't happen very often. But yeah, that's the plan. Josh and I are gonna do a little Q and A. It's gonna be fun because it's like a little date. I made chocolate covered strawberries. I told him I'll take care of the snack if you take care of the drink. So we'll see what drink he gets. <laughs> but I'm just doing my skincare quickly as I get out of the shower. I have been using Dime lately and they are sponsoring today's video. I'm sure you guys have heard of Dime. They're amazing, clean skincare, and they're very straightforward and simple. I feel like if you're just diving into the skincare world, Dime is a great affordable price, and also it's very transparent. You can go online and see what they're putting in all of their products. They put things in intentionally, and I've just loved using them, and I actually have the Works, which you can get online, and they gave me a 20% off discount that you guys can use, which is incredible. I don't like to endorse or wear a lot of makeup. I believe in skincare and just taking care of the longevity of your skin. One of their favorite products of mine right now is this Hyperglow, Hyperglow Antioxidant and Brightening. You guys are always like, oh my goodness, she has the pregnancy glow. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe, or maybe it's my dime skincare, I don't know. Um, my skin was really, really bad right after I got pregnant and it's cleared up over the last eight, nine months, so that's really a good thing. And yeah, Dime has just been working really good for me. Also, I have my pretty new bathroom, so I love their packaging. It's nice and simple, sleek, and yeah, not only, I think one thing about clean products is sometimes you kind of make the assumption that they don't actually work. And Dime does not sacrifice their effectiveness just to be clean. If you go on their website, you can find why each ingredient is in each product. There's no fillers and scents. I have their dewy day cream and their night cream as well as this TBT cream which I have not experimented with this one too much yet because I've been using tallow balm but I'm excited to try this out. It's like a retinol alternative. You don't want to use retinol when you're pregnant and this is good for any stage of life. There is something on dime for everyone. They even have some makeup products on there and I just, you saw me at the beginning of the video putting on their super skin toner. I do that when I get out of the shower. And so this toner has been helping with, yeah, just evening out your skin tone in general and making your skin look naturally young, youthful, plump, all that stuff. Each of their formulations has earned a third party approval from the EWG. They have no added fragrances and their products never contain parabens, sulfates, phthalates, or BPA, BPSs. Their products are made in the US, sustainably packaged in biodegradable and 100% recycled packaging. Dime skincare systems are created to bring luxury and intention into any routine. So go to dimebeautyco.com slash MeganFoxUnlocked and use the promo code MeganFoxUnlocked at checkout to get 20% off of your Dime skincare routine. And it's not just me. I know a lot of people who love Dime, but I know there's a lot of you moms out there who don't want to just dump money into something that, you know, you don't know is going to work. So with Dime, you know they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Okay, I'm going to get changed and we will sit down with Josh here and we'll do our Valentine video. Finally, we get to use the pretty cups. What is this? It's good. Look how much I love you. Look at that. I mean, why are there <laughs> ones without chocolate? Oh, I want the ones with the chocolate. I know he'd say that. Um, good for pretty. Oh, okay. Like the pink. Right. <laughs> Only these were like those Florida strawberries, you know? Anyway, let's try one. Yeah, I made chocolate covered strawberries and they are so cute. Super easy. I want to make more with the kids sometime. Look at that. They got so cute. Oh my goodness. Let's ignore my awful nails. Here, try that one. That's the prettiest one. Or should we save the prettiest one? They're good. You had one? Were you sneaking them? The rock hard sour strawberries are almost better because you have the sweet and the sour. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that you make in the summertime and they're super sweet, they're good too. I'm not gonna lie, but. Mm. Sparkling apple cider, chocolate covered strawberries. There's your idea for your little indoor date night. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hopefully you guys can see us in this lighting. But I thought it'd be fun to do a Q&A again. One, because Q&As are just always really fun. It's been a tradition, number two. And number three, these are really easy to edit as well. And as you can see, at the time of filming this, I'm still big and pregnant. So it'll be nice to have something easy to work on in the coming month. So yeah, I did want to say before we get started, it feels warm in here, doesn't it? Like it feels good for once. Josh has been like battling with our home circulation, heating, cooling situation. It's been like, I don't know if you can see out the window, but it's blowing snow all day today. 
it's been snowing off and on all week. Yeah. Which is really odd for us. I mean, this hasn't happened in what, two, three years? At least two or three years. Last year we didn't really get any snow Nothing. at all. So. I mean, normally this is how winters are. It's just been so long since it's been this way. But way. last year we had two different separate cold snaps that were the coldest, like, oh, yeah. on record. It's like so, so cold. Uh, but we didn't get snow. So this year we got snow and it's been cold. It's been low teens every every morning. Yeah, but the kids don't care. They are out in the snow. They love it so much. <laughs> they can't remember. Like, I don't even think they remember having snow no. because it's been two years. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you're new to our channel, I'm Megan, this is Josh, and we have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old at the moment, mm -hmm. and one on the way, so that kind of frames our questions, our answers, and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. we ask you guys on our YouTube community tab for questions, and Josh was looking through them. I feel like you should give a life update with all the things that have been happening to you in the past 24 hours with your <laughs> internet debacle and your phone plan debacle, and like, mm. he's just so done. He's like, I'd rather deal with a car salesman at the moment. <laughs> Technology companies are just awful. Every single oh. one of them, they're terrible. If your husband Cell works for phone. one, I hope he's a light uh, in the darkness. I mean, because... <laughs> it's awful. They, they make... I'm trying to get off of a business plan and move to my personal plan and trying to get your phone number. I want to keep the same number. I want my own number. I want to keep that number. Yeah, no kidding. And, uh, Who wants to give up their phone it's number? It's like pulling teeth trying to get them to figure out how to do that. I was on the phone from probably 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock yesterday. Yeah, I don't know and if I've ever appreciated really didn't get anywhere. I don't know if I've ever appreciated him so much as when he's out shoveling snow with a shovel and when he's dealing with internet and phone bills because <laughs> I shh, over my head. Anyway, yeah. so what's the first question we can talk about? I I mean I'll just kinda of go in order that I have stuff screenshotted. So okay. um the one fifty likes. Some yeah, that was one I wanted to look at too, but mm. this first one seventy one likes says, Do you enjoy Megan's job on YouTube as you did six years ago? And when it started, when it started, and is it something you can see doing for the next ten years? There you go. She can read. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of it as Megan's job. That's funny. But it is, it is. It is your job. I guess. Well, no, but I don't have to show up. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, I don't mind it. Like it doesn't bother me. I prefer to, not like. I, I know a lot of people say like, why is Josh not on? You know, I see those comments, why is Josh not on more? And I'm like, I'm good, I don't need to be on. I don't really, I mean, it's not my interest at all in life. Like, it's not, that's that's not what my channel is, so. that's what, Actually, I find a lot of Q&As with husband and wife very cringy yeah. because husbands are not used to being on camera and like, you know, the wife that runs the YouTube right. channel is, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you've gotten more comfortable over yeah, the years. I don't but, know how to talk and look into a camera. I'm talking, oh yeah, his I'm thinking, eye contact I'm is like deplorable. <laughs> talking into a camera, like I gotta talk to the camera, that's just not yeah. my We've never team. been a family channel and we are never going to be, in fact we'll probably get less and less of that over the years as the kids get mm -hmm. older and stuff yeah. too, so. But yeah, you're a fun I mean, little addition. No, right, right I enjoy, I enjoy seeing it, I enjoy what you've, like, your creative mind. Am I gonna be doing it in 10 years? That's funny. <laughs> I'll be 41. I Who hope, knows? you know, I enjoy it so much, so, hey, we'll very see. Possible. It's knows? very possible. I could, I could see it. I just don't um, know how people are going to still be interested in me in 10 years, but, I mean, by then, in 10 years, I'll be full of, like, wisdom, and I'll, like, I'll know, <laughs> yeah, I'll know all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, maybe. isn't that um, what you all say? I would definitely, though, say I enjoy it more now than I did six years ago, just because it's, I don't know, I figured out, like, what I enjoy and what I like to film, and I'm better at things, like, things take a little bit less time. But on the other hand, it's harder to find time because of the kids. <laughs> Do you, so, I mean, I recently transitioned from working full time at, you know, somewhere else to going back to doing my own thing. Has, have you felt like it's gotten easier to do YouTube? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, the flexibility is so nice. Um, because you're not quite as, it seems like you're not quite as behind these last couple of weeks. I've also been filming things that are less like, yeah. yeah. You've been made a conscious effort to try and... Well, yeah. and you do the podcast stuff. You, mm -hmm. Like, basically, me and Jane are the face of the podcast, and then you're mm -hmm. the guy that's behind the scenes, so that's really nice. What would you say are yours and Josh's spiritual gifts? Which is such an interesting question, because we just had two sermons on it at church, and I thought the sermons were interesting, but I also agree with my one friend who says that she thinks we put a little bit too much emphasis on, like, figuring out your spiritual gift and then trying to live it out, you know? She's like, just do the next thing, be obedient to the next thing. Even if something's not necessarily your gift, maybe it's something that is, you're being asked to do or whatever. 
you know, don't just think that you have to, that's not my spiritual gift, can't do it because it's not an act of service or like mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I always thought yours was acts of service, but you said you kind of disagree with it. Yeah, I bit. have no idea. I don't know what my spiritual gift is. I don't know. I'm sure I, it changes over the years too. Because you know? we had a conversation with the one guy at church that I respect, and he he had the same answer. He's like, "Yeah, I, I don't really know what my spiritual gift is. Like, it just it seems like there are days where I just want to be the person that does stuff behind the scenes and acts of service, and the next time I'm like, no, I would like to, you know, do something different or like. Honestly, I think we might both have a touch of administration in us. Like, we see a task. Or a project yeah. that needs to happen yeah. and we just take it on but I feel like for myself I've had very little margin mm -hmm. to be able to do that with children and everything you know so yeah. I feel like I'm not using my spiritual gift as much as I did when I was single mm -hmm. or you know in high school or young you know one only one kid or whatever but yeah that's I would guess we both touch mm -hmm. we're both the oldest we both are used to getting the job done we can like see what has to happen to get from point A to point Z you know and boss people around and make it happen kind of thing. <laughs> but you're much better at working behind the scenes than I am. Like, I feel like I am really bad for wanting the credit if I'm doing the work. And like, I have to be okay with like, just giving money anonymously or like, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I noticed there's a lot of questions about um, our faith, Mennonites, you know, opinions, kind of spiritual, spiritual questions. There was a lot of that. Um, and then there was also a bunch of questions on marriage, and that type of thing. There was one question that, that when I was reading through them, I pray and pray and yet I don't feel different. How do I know when God is truly working in my heart? Um, and I have, I, I don't know, I'm not sure I know how you know when God's working in your heart, but the first thing that went, that I thought of when I read that was like, well, pr prayer is important, but I think one of the first things that you're going to feel different about is if you read the Bible. Um, I felt like recently, you know, a few months ago, I started to make a concerted effort to really dig into reading the Bible more, and I felt like it really changed my outlook on a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And so I think, like, prayer is very important, but I think you, if, you have to make a concerted effort to spend time in the Word. It's, it's really then the way you can... Yeah, I literally ask him, like, what's up with you? Like, I've seen this change and that change and whatever. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. And you're like, well, I guess I've been actually, like, taking my spiritual life a little more seriously. Yeah. And, like, yeah, it kind of totally became tangible in, like, real actual areas of life. Do you have disagreements on raising your children? And how do you discipline or intend to discipline? I had um, that one screenshotted, too. What were you going to say? I'm like, we're yeah. starting to have disagreements. Like, we're starting to, like, before I would have said we're pretty much on the same page, but... With you, like, being a little more hands-on as the kids get older, mm -hmm. I feel like we definitely handle different situations differently. Yeah, I think you have these, like, ideas and visions in your head, like, we're going to have these lines that we're going to walk. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's quite that great. Like, why do you, like, why? Like, I don't know. Uh, the screen time thing is a big one, right? That's the disagreement that we have the most. Now, I just want my kids to be able to live life. Like, there's no time to live life, and then we're no. gonna take some of that time and put it in front of a screen. Like, no, like, we don't even have enough time okay. to do all the fun things yep. that there are to do. And, and that's the topic of conversation disagreement that we have regularly because it's more work to sit down and play skippo with your kids than to flop down on the sofa and watch yeah. basketball. No, I, I get that, <laughs> I understand that, but I will say this I feel like you have, while well, you used to be hardcore, no screen, no screen, no screen, you have. We have one thing we have kind of figured out. There are times when I do support you and your no screen thing. And then there's times where I'm going, no, let the kids sit down with me. And we're going to watch hockey game tonight. And that's what we're going to do. because I've learned that they just get bored really quick and they run off. So yeah, it's all good. Right. They, they, just, they just want to cuddle with daddy. It's nothing with the screen. Yeah. It's not like yeah. Yeah. So, something. I feel like it was just easier before we opened the can of worms. We got a tablet at Christmas time. For me to like when the kids want to listen to an audiobook right. or something, I don't have to use my phone as the device. Yeah. And, um, and then Ivani does some extra math and some learning stuff on there once mm -hmm. in a great while. Yep. Um, we both can get like when we get impatient, the other one just like steps in because it's like, okay, I know you're annoyed because this is probably the 40th time it happened today. Let me take care of it because it's not rubbing me the wrong way quite as much as it's rubbing you the wrong way. Or, you're you know, talking whatever. on yeah, parenting issues, yeah. Just like, yeah. you know, the little things. But yeah, yeah, I think with smaller children, it's the 
situations are a little more mm-hmm. cut and dried. But I was listening to now that we're a family podcast and they were talking about how taking the time to like intentionally train them on a certain topic or issue is like investing in your future rather than just yep. like say no and that's that. Mm-hmm. But like actually, okay, let's show them how to clear off the table or let's show them how they're supposed to act when you're and they're sitting there and you're combing their hair. You know, like I don't have issues with a lot of that stuff anymore mm-hmm. with Ivani as, as a six year old because I worked with her on different things when she was three. And I'm like, yeah, that's so true. So we got to keep it up. It's not easy. It's not the fast option. But yeah, it's investing in your future and making things easier for later on. And then there's always a new two year old to be retraining, you know? But like, yeah. it's really nice having older ends. siblings, this older siblings yep. look out for the little one and be like, that's not how we act or that's not what we do. So yes, we do have disagreements now. I think um, as the kids get older, we're noticing them a little bit more. But we were both raised pretty similarly, so that helps. I cannot imagine if we were like completely opposite ends of the yeah, spectrum. Yeah, if we, yeah, no, you're exactly right. There would be things, I think there'd be a lot more to work through because our families were raised pretty similarly. What is your favorite thing to do together? <laughs> sleep in on Saturday mornings. Oh wait, you don't ever sleep in. No, I don't. <laughs> Favorite thing to do together. I don't know what do you, what do you enjoy doing with me. You like, I mean Saturday mornings. <laughs> yeah, Saturday mornings are fun. I, Actually, you know, what I was thinking about we need to get a Green Chef box again or something. It was fun cooking together. We haven't done that in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess I like it because I know what I'm doing, and then you just have to like, kind of, what do I do now? What do I, like I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to cook together again. The kids can go off and play, and we can. We should make bacon wrapped meat again or something. Like that's fun. Yeah. We used to always have people over me. Yeah. Oh, we're on a mission right together. now to try to find like make the best smoker wings and we're yeah. almost there. We're like very close. Back to along with that disagreements and stuff. I, somebody had a comment and I now I don't know where it is. She this this lady was making the comment that she finds it tough to She's very, a very stubborn-minded person where, in arguments, it's very tough to back down. And so basically, Megan. No, no. <laughs> I mean, if you want to take it that way, sure. But no, what, what I'm saying is, is, she was asking, how have you learned to, in an argument where you think you're right, but maybe you don't really know for sure, how do you back down? And, like... Uh, humor. Just laugh, like laugh, and be like, "Oh my word, duh," or I don't know, like I've done, like that happened this past week. What was the issue? And I'm like, "Oh, man. oh, we were at the farm show," and I'm like, "This is the way we need to go." Oh, yeah. And he's like, "No, Megan, this is the correct way." And I'm like, "Fine." I said, "I'm gonna go the way that I know that we were supposed to go." And then he's like, "Look, I don't know why you didn't explain to me." He marched me over to the map. He shows me the map. He's like, "This is where we were. <laughs> this is where we're going." So I'm going this way. Me and the children are going this way. Have fun. And I'm like. Yeah, that yeah, was so uh, embarrassing. A lot of times, that's how, <laughs> so how my reaction is: is okay, fine. You want you're so sure that you're right about a certain thing. So you sure. go ahead and be right about it, and let's see where this ends up. In my up. head, I've been here a hundred <laughs> times, but you you've been there realized. like three hundred times. Yeah, and I've, you yeah. quickly realized that. Oh yeah, um, we're supposed to go this yeah. way. Yeah, so I just. But I think in in more other issues that that we get worked up about or we're passionately discussing. Um, <laughs> Actually, discussing. <laughs> That's a good word for arguing, fighting, whatever. Correct. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely that's something. Well, I wouldn't say we're very great at Neither is backing is. down on in an argument or discussion. Um, a lot of times it comes down to all right, we're not agreeing on this. Just let it go. And a lot of times it works itself out. We figure yeah. it out. Um, True. But, Walk away from it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, there's people that say, don't go to bed till you have it all hashed out. Like, oh my word, that would not work for us. By the way, all these questions, I should have also said at the beginning, you're hearing them from both oldest. Like, we, we were both the oldest. So that's quite the interesting dynamic. Like, Is it though? I don't know. People say on paper that doesn't work. But, yeah. So now you're seeing two oldest. Yeah, names. Comment sure. down below if you're married to an oldest and you're also an oldest. Our personalities are enough different, though. But imagine if I was a youngest who like la di la, like dust along and like whatever, like it would not work. It'd be amazing. <laughs> really? <laughs> you would want to be in charge of everything. I, mean, I don't know that I want to be in charge of anything, but <laughs> I enjoy that you are a very go-getter person. I love that. I do. 
I really do because it makes it does make my job a little easier. But then there's certain times in certain places where I go, man. It would be nice just to have another child or what that you need to bother with. Oh my. No, it's all fun. You know, it does. I don't think it wouldn't matter. It's easy to get yourself annoyed at either side of it. Yeah. Like, and you have to you ha you have to learn. I don't think there's a single married couple that doesn't deal with these kinds of things. Don't matter if you're the youngest, oldest, or you're the perfect, perfect middle child. Except children. for our one friends. <laughs> our one friends. They are um, perfect middle children. <laughs> and they get along all the time. Splendidly. So yeah, they, they have their disagreements. But they deserve each other. You have to, both, like, you yeah. have to figure it out. It doesn't matter. And I think we figure. We haven't figured it out, but we're figuring it out. <laughs> In the Mennonite culture, do the older children pay the parents to live at home, similar to the Amish? How does that transition work, especially with the boys? This is interesting. Mennonites and sorry, money. Sorry, back up. Do the older children pay the parents to live at home? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is such an interesting question, because hmm. Mennonites and money, we definitely approach things differently, I feel, than a lot of the world, and that is true. It says, do the older children pay the parents to live at home? You paid rent. Once you turned 18. Oh yeah, once I turned 18. Yeah. I was working full time. Are you planning on doing that with your kids? I did not pay rent. I was a school teacher. I made a very I mean, lowly amount, but mom said- 12 years away. I sure am not making yeah. that decision now. But my mom said that I need help with some housework. Um, I need to, you know, clean the bathroom once a week and like a couple of different things, which I half the time never did. And she took compassion on me anyway because of my terrible teaching salary, I guess. I don't know. Um, so you're saying you didn't pay him? You oh. didn't pay your parents at all? No, they never asked me to. But I gave him half my paycheck till I turned 18. Yeah. Well, um, but yeah. That's rent. Th I mean, that's a Mennonite specific thing, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's going more and more away. Like, I don't I think my little sister. I had a lot of friends that didn't pay half in. Okay. Why? Well, I, I don't I didn't have hardly any friends who paid any rent. Like, and no, I've never heard of Mennonites kicking their children out of the house at 18 or anything. I think it really varies. I think it might have, I mean, I, I think, think it really does. I think it varies. There's people that do and people that don't. I, I, I think it stems from back in the day. People had like 12, 15 children. And, you know, once the children were of a certain age, you could get work on rural farms and stuff like that at much younger ages back then. Like there wasn't all the workman's mm -hmm. comp and stuff. You know, you could put your 14-year-old over here or there and the money just came home and went in the big family pot. Like that's like generations ago. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like that's just trickled down and it's going away more and more. So I, I think I think the reasoning behind it and a lot of it is, look, you've got a full-time job. It costs money to run a house. It costs money to heat a house. Like, you've got a full-time job you can help pay for it. And I think, so I think, I personally, I think my kids are probably going to pay a little bit of rent when they're at home after they're a certain age. Really? Um, well. And the other side of it is too. It's no, I agree with you though. Like you if I have a twenty four year old. You've got to teach home. money is is uh it's it's something that you gotta have to live and but that's you gotta teach them how to use it and how to control it and how to control spending, how to save, how to budget. I think at eighteen years old there's no I, I don't know, I'm saying that now, but I'm saying I think that's a big reason why a lot of Mennonites would do it. Well, I mean, you definitely need to start teaching your kids how to handle money. I think that starts at the age of five, but yeah. yeah I think you gotta teach them account it's accountability. Hey, but you're my gonna, thing is too. If you're gonna live it in my house using, you know, eating our food, and you're I'm doing your laundry. 18 yeah, we have all these plus. boys. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. There's definitely something to that. I it didn't affect me negatively having to give half my money home. Till you were 18. Till I was 18, then I think I paid. I think it was like I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I think it was three hundred dollars a month. Wow. But I had a full time job. Like I worked 50, yeah. 60 hours a week. I don't know. I don't think there's so, anything wrong. Like you do what works yeah. for your family. I think there's a, also a very big difference between an 18 year old who just graduated from high school. Correct. And who's entering the workforce and a 24 year old who's still squatting at home. Yeah. Which part of me is like, please, children, stay forever. But no, on the other hand, no. no, no, no. no. I want them out. <laughs> like go, <laughs> go start your own families. You know? Oh, I don't wow. know. I can see both sides. Yeah, of it, I can but. see both sides. <laughs> yeah. Someone had a question about. Strict, I think they use the word religion. Strict religion, and then children that, rebelling from yeah, it. Yeah, do children rebel from that more often? Um, and do we hear a lot of stories of that? So I mean, I wouldn't say I hear a lot of stories. Of course, it happens. We're not forced. I don't think anyone, for the most part, is being. No one's being forced to stay Mennonite. No one's being forced to be part of a Mennonite church. Um, we don't shun people. We don't shun. That's not something we practice um, or anything. So, does it happen? Sure. Um, 
the sad part is you do start to see that more and the more conservative you get. Um, well, I think it's based on the fact that they have all these rules and guidelines mm -hmm. that are they're not backed up by anything biblical. Or if they are backed up by something biblical, they never taught that teaching to their kids. Yeah. So yeah. their children are doing these things as like lip service or... You know, yeah. how long is your hair? Do you prefer bobby pins or cork corkscrews for putting it up? Oh my word, that's hilarious. I, I always no trim idea. my hair off right before I have a baby because I know it's <laughs> all about to fall said, out. Did you? What? I said I have no idea. <laughs> what the difference is. <laughs> I have no clue. What is the difference? No clue. Not I don't sure. know what a corkscrew is. I use um, hair pins, bobby pins, I guess you could call them. Um, but yeah, every time right before I have a baby, I trim my hair off because I know it's about to get, um, like, you know, you lose all the postpartum hair and stuff. It's just easier to maintain and whatever. When I say trim, I mean, it's still long. I still have long hair. But anyway, no, I'm not one of those people that never has trimmed their hair in their entire life. Um, I feel like when the Bible says about women having cut hair, it's the maybe not the letter of the law. It's more like the spirit of it, women having long hair. If you may move someday soon, would you still be in track to renovate your kitchen? Oh, my word. Yeah, that was just Josh being rash when we were doing the steps. He sat there on the floor and was like, I don't know what to do to fix these steps because no, they were no, so no. bad. And you're like, let's no. just move. <laughs> the motive, Wait, you were serious? The motive behind me sitting there looking at it was going, I am so done with projects around this place. I would love to spend a month fixing this entire house up to the way you want it and then be done. Like Wait, The way we want it. Yeah, the way you want it. The way we want it. And the way you want it. You like those steps before? They were, they were just falling fine. Apart. They were just fine. The steps were fine. <laughs> if I can get this house, which that's part, like, I want a house. I want to, like, as a husband, I would like to have this house to your standards if I can. Like, if it's feasible, I want my wife to be happy with her house. So I'm going to do what I can to make that happen, right? Yes. So I would like all that to happen now. <laughs> so I don't have all these projects I hanging over, over my head. head. But yeah, whatever. Well, it's I mean, awesome. I was gonna fact. say, where's the money coming if you want to do it all at once? And like, uh, it's fun to like. I'm the bank. pro. I'm the project manager for all these things. Like, I enjoyed six months of dreaming yeah. about how we're gonna do our patio. You know, and then we get the patio done, and then you know, save up See, some I'm, more money no. and do the next project. Dreaming is not fun. Because you know you have to do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's dreams involved. Those dreams involve work for me, so it's a little tough. <laughs> There's so many questions I would have asked if I was like doing dating again, all over again. Like one, are you a contractor or a mechanic? One or the other, you gotta be one. I'm so glad I'm married to one of those two, because it's so handy. Oh, my, dad, would, my dad was a mechanic. Or you is. would be used to whatever. You would, yeah, you would exactly, like, I don't know, oh. but it's super handy. Yeah, I wish you were good at internet and stuff right now. Like, yeah, no, please just lay a cable down. I don't know if there's works. any person that's good at dealing with technology and companies. Uh, it's pathetic. No, there's so anyway. many out there. <laughs> yeah. How do you manage stress and homemaking? Well, I feel like homemaking is not stressful. So when I'm stressed out, I like to just do the homemaking stuff, like fold the basket of laundry, wipe down the kitchen cabinets, counters, stuff like that. Like that helps relieve stress because it's not stressful. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a very stressful ball of stress sometimes, so yeah. Bitch. Let's get into some weeds here. I saw an Instagram, you see all these like YouTubers and bloggers and stuff retiring their husbands and like people that I respect a lot and that I follow, I love their content, you know, their husbands at home helping out and stuff. And then I saw an Instagram post that said about how men are designed to work and to leave the home and to conquer and blah, 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 blah. What's your take on that? I'm sorry, I just hijacked the Q&A. I mean, I mean, obviously yeah. we both feel like both people can have both no, opinions, I, I, but what's our opinion? I like to work. I, If I'm, like, okay, right now my goal is to be home at least one day a week, helping out with stuff. Stuff, as in what? Well, like, you're not washing the dishes what, and folding the laundry. Not necessarily, but it is sometimes involves me looking after the kids while you're putting in a few extra hours at YouTube or whatever to, to catch up with some stuff. or. I also have the back end of, of book work that goes along with YouTube and the website, our website. So He's taken on more and more anything yeah. that's not creative or has my face on it. He's taken on more of that stuff. But you, I think it's it's not necessarily about going out. and I think, like, to me, like, I feel like I need my own thing. I feel like I need my own thing to work at. Okay, so, like, the website is an example where, like, it's my job to get the order shipped out and... It's my thing to conquer. It's 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 a one. It's an area where I need to conquer it, 
if if it was solely my job to come home to not go out and work at all not be a contractor but to look after the kids and to basically only support your YouTube I don't know I feel like I would just be, I, I don't know I'm not sure how I'd handle it <laughs> sorry I I'm trying to envision this I don't know how I would handle it well I, you wouldn't be using your skills necessarily which that's what I thought when I started to become a mom I was like I'm not gonna get to use my skills now I'm a mom there's no skills needed to be a mom so not true so you might have changed your tune if you became a homemaker but honestly I'm that's not us at all and some days I feel like it's almost wrong to yeah, make I'm a husband. Sure I, I don't, yeah, like, I don't think I'd find fulfillment in it. And there might be husbands that do find fulfillment. But I was going to say, but for other people, I like. Yeah. I don't want to say it's wrong for everyone because I've seen really cool situations. Yeah, you know? I, I, and some people want to be all at home together, homeschooling, living on their homestead, like whatever. You know, that's everybody has their own thing, and that's fine. Like, I'm not going to... Mm. But see, that's a little different. The homesteading or, or the, a mini farm of some sort, that's a... That's, or a, yeah, any farm, really. It's a little bit, it's different. Like, yeah. still the man has his responsibilities. But if you're telling me I don't really have any responsibilities besides keeping house. You would love it in the summer. Oh. You just go off all summer. <laughs> 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 Suddenly it sounds a little more appealing. Uh, now maybe we can talk this out. Yeah. <laughs> no. There was, uh, someone asked a couple of questions right in a row. Um, kind of fun, lighter questions. Out of the four seasons, which one is your favorite? You have something to say? Yeah, what's your favorite season? I don't know. I like them all. Just let me live in Pennsylvania where I can have all the seasons. Yeah. But let's make let's make winter one month. Right, right. Like, but what season is your favorite? Fall. That's Every funny. Day. And my favorite is spring. <laughs> it's, it's always yeah. been spring's my favorite season. You can, I, fall is okay, but fall is the month of, or is the time of like, oh boy, it's getting cold. Like, ugh. It's the but farmer coming spring. out of you. I love spring. You grew up on a farm. Yep. And then uh, the next question was, what was something unexpected that happened at your wedding? <laughs> well, the men, the guys in the bridal party, including Josh, mm -hmm. all rented plain suits. They're like, basically, the church we went to did not allow tuxedos. You had to go and get your suit expensively altered and chopped off and like, whatever. Anyway, um, and so... We weren't going to make our friends do They had all different color suits and like it would have looked awful. Um, so we rented plain suits. You could get them. They're not called plain suits. They were called some kind of luxury, like they were actually in style at the time. Um, and we rented them from a suit rental place. And so all these guys had to go get their suits back again that dead night. And we were leaving for our honeymoon that next day. So Josh mm -hmm. had to. So anyway, they're all in the bathroom. Him and all the groomsmen and stuff getting changed. They were in there for like 45 minutes. And I'm like sitting out there. Everybody's like cleaning up. I had like a wedding dress on that was not very easy to like help with. And everybody's like, no, Megan, just sit down, whatever. So I'm sitting there with nothing to do for half an hour. We waited till marriage. I'm sitting there all stressed out, worked up, like, oh my word, we're about to go off on our honeymoon here. And you just did not come out of the bathroom and did not come and did not come. And oh my word, I just started getting more and more nervous so all the fun. time. I don't think it was more than 15, 20 minutes <laughs> at most. Ever. But anyway, I don't. <laughs> I, I still, you know what's funny? I don't remember anything about, like, I remember it was, we were all in there getting changed. You weren't nervous. No, I was, <laughs> we were just hang, chatting. I, I have no clue. I don't even know who was in there. But anyway, I don't know. I was just in there chatting and my wife, at that time, my wife was sitting out there. Your wife of four hours. <laughs> bugging out. Scared. <laughs> For what's I wasn't coming. scared. I was just. <laughs> I was just like oh, I don't man. know. Like yeah, I was getting in my head. Yeah. I was sitting there with nothing to do. That was unexpected the things. I uh, we've told the story before. But our our wedding favors were cotton candy, <laughs> and we made them the day before. Great wedding favor idea, by the way. Four cents a person. We had cotton because cotton candy was a thing. We did our wedding colors. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we packaged it up. Two days before Thursday. Mm. Yep, and it all went flat, and so we I did it all we again on Friday. I, we couldn't get into the building before. I'm telling you, I, we did it Friday, and it, it happened overnight because they came in Saturday morning. People came in and made more of it. Oh, they made it Saturday morning yet? Yes. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah, so the cotton candy... It was yeah, like a 95-degree day, and yeah. the humidity just was not friendly to the cotton candy. Oh, man. Hey, it worked out. Yep. Somebody asked, do we homeschool? No, we send our six-year-old to a private Mennonite Christian school. Um, and I try to be as hands-on as I can with all of that, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit um, hard to let your baby go off to school on the bus, you know. 
I only have a first grader. But it's a great option in our area, and that's actually an option that a lot of Mennonites in our area do. Like, homeschooling is getting a little bit bigger, I would say, in Lancaster County, but it's not a necessity at all just because we have so many other options besides public school. We have lots of, you can find as many genres of Mennonite churches, you can almost find that many genres of Mennonite schools. So you can kind of make sure that your kids are hopefully getting mm -hmm. the teaching that you want them to get. Not that that excuses you as a parent from addressing all the issues as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we do. And most of my friends, I would say, send their kids to a private Christian school, which is not cheap. It's not cheap at all. But I think the Mennonite culture, most people, if their children want to go to college, their kids put themselves through college. Like, it's not like we're all saving up this college fund for our kids for the future. It's like if they want to go to college for their career in the future, we'll figure that out then. You know, they can work through school or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it kind of comes out in the wash. I think Mennonites technically spend more on their K through 12 education then somebody's gonna spend on a four-year college degree. I looked into it. It's definitely more expensive, but it's also spread out over more years. Has, there's a two-part question here. It says, how do you all spend your time in the evenings after the kids are in bed? And do you or have you ever allowed any of the kids to sleep with you all? Have we ever let the kids sleep with us? No. I'm, I like. I feel like I, if I could live two lives, I'd like mm -hmm. to live one life where we do it the way we do, and another mm -hmm. life where I get to cuddle my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know. See, I was. There's something that, like, and it's even the way I was raised. Mom and Dad's bedroom is, like, the place you don't, like, that's not the place you go. Um, it's, like, the sacred quarters. <laughs> you know? yeah, but we, it is we kind of, like, we, were, we weren't allowed in our parents' bedroom either. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That kind of just went, that was never really even a question for us. Our kids. Yeah, we don't um, do co-sleeping or anything no, like that. No, we don't the baby, them, yeah. Well, I think with our first house, the baby's nursery was so close. It was like, what's the point of having the baby in your room with you? Yeah. The nursery's right there. And, yeah, yeah. so. Even the baby, it's, you know, if, if we'll hold the baby if we have to, you know, to get it to sleep. But not in the room. And then lay in its crib. Like, we, that's something we're pretty intentional about is getting our babies into their crib by themselves. But oh, how do, and then they also said, how do you all spend time? In the evenings after the kids are in bed. There's not a ton of time because we, yeah. we go to bed decently early. Yeah, we do. I mean, we till we get the kids to bed and we get showered, we're, we're going to bed too. We don't really hang out late yeah. at Like all. my one friend, she like cleans the house and bakes cookies and does, like sure. Yeah, neither of us really come mm -hmm. to life, mm -hmm. I would say. We're ready for bed. No. You're such a morning person. I'm mm -hmm. neither a morning person or a night owl, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 9.30 is the optimal time to be sleeping, but it's sometimes 10.30. 10. Yeah, 10.30 is the latest. Yeah. How about naming the baby Joshua Jr.? <laughs> I feel like that sure. would be a cop out. You know what? If the, if you were like, yeah, let's do it, I would be like, okay, fine. Like I don't know that I'd say no, but I prefer finding a different name. But yeah, how do you all budget? Oh my goodness, I would love to track money and budgeting, but Josh is the money dude, and he hates trying to explain things to me. Once in a great while, he'll be like sit me down and be like, stop worrying. This money's going to this place. This money's going to this yeah. place. Like, it's not like I'm a big spender that he has to be like reining me in all the time and stuff. No, um, you're the opposite. I have to beg you to spend money a lot of the time. Which somebody said that I'm spending money a lot on YouTube lately. But yeah, there that's... was a comment recently about that, about how you're, it seems like you're living lavishly now, um, that you have a YouTube channel. and. Which you're gonna get comments like that. Yeah, but yeah, no, it, our house when we moved in was not to the level of any of our friends or what, what we were even used to at our first cute little home and it's just yeah. taken time it's taken time and now um yeah i feel like it's co and i mm -hmm. like it i you know everybody i'm a human too i struggle i see online one day i'll feel like oh my goodness why am i even putting my home on youtube i have this beat up 1970s kitchen like people are going to find my channel and be like why is she online she has nothing special you know because i like watching the aspirational beautiful home decor type videos and mm -hmm. stuff and I'm not anywhere to that level. But then another day I can like see somebody else who has a really big channel and their house is not cute and not nice at all. You know, and they still have a lot of people who value their opinions and their, you know, content that they put out there. And so then I feel like maybe I am living too lavishly. So it's, it's really I, a I, comparison game. I, I try to remind you often there are people are not watching your videos for your nice house. Exactly. So I think there's, there's, they want content, sure. They also want to be encouraged in different aspects of their life. Budgeting to me is, while well, if money was really tight, sure. And I, my idea is simply be wise at every turn with spending your money. Don't spend foolishly or lavishly. 
Um, it's okay to <laughs> spoil yourself once in a while. <laughs> okay, Josh. It is. 2023 was the year of Josh we spoiling spent... himself. <laughs> Maybe. No, I, he needed a truck. Did it need to be a new truck? Well, that's debatable, but anyway. Well, I mean, you can make all the arguments, and I will convince you that buying the new one was the right move. So, in the long term, I guess, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, but, yeah. he's sitting here talking about living frugally. Right. We didn't even budget right after we got married, because my mom was, my mom was always like, why would you budget? Just don't spend money. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think if you are a spender, budgeting gives you freedom to spend then. And so that is a good thing. Like if you it are tells a spender, you how much you can spend. Yeah, exactly. Um, but with you being a tight wad, it's a little easier to... <laughs> what about you? You don't spend money, I guess. I mean, I, yeah. I. You just, when you do spend, it's bigger purchases. But yeah, you're not like just day-to-day -day nickeling mm -hmm. and diving yourself to no. death either. No. I would love to know what our house would look like if I had no get up and go about it or any gumption. Like, how much would I it mean, look? as far as decorations and improvements. Well, like, it no, would... it, improvements. Like, the carpet. And like, yeah. No, I probably would have replaced that kind of stuff. But like, when it comes to painting the cabinets and stuff like that, I probably would have been like, eh, it's fine. Yeah, because aesthetics aren't as big of a deal. But no. I mean, you. But again, that's why I want. I mean, that's why I'm trying to do all these projects. It's because I want to create a house. You know, it's, I'm still a kid. Like I want my <laughs> You're still a kid. I want my girl to Flip love that. the house that that uh, <laughs> I'm providing for her. Yeah. So. Well, and it's also something you're really good at. I try to show a lot of appreciation. Like this sun porch, it's just blissful right now. Like I love it so much, and I'm like, he did it. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, I guess you just did the floors, but still, you put, built all the furniture and like, right. yep. yeah. With three previous babies, how do you guys get through the rough newborn phase, or even the first year of adding a new baby in the mix? Um, you just take everything off your plate that you can, like all the extras, just don't matter anymore. Um, he comes home from work the first couple of weeks and I just like walk over to him and hug him and fall into his arms and like start crying. And I don't know why I'm crying, but I'm just like so done. <laughs> it's tiredness, it's tiredness. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he's like often will like, you come home, you take the baby and I go shower or something or just something like to get away from yeah. it all. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No, I think I think as as a husband you have to be willing to also put in extra work and not expect it to all be your wife's job. Um, oh you yeah. Ha you have to put in. It's gonna take some extra work. There's first, you know, especially the first, you know, eight nine months. A lot of times it it definitely. You get into a rhythm after I would yeah, say you six do. to eight. Which our babies all slept through the night around seven weeks ish, and that's when you start to feel like a whole new person. So mm -hmm. if that's not happening, then I guess that season of life could be longer. Um, yeah. I Mil just don't Miller was a little rougher. He 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 kept us up. He woke up once or twice a night for probably I mean until he was a year and a half old, pretty much. You're not remembering it, right? No, Megan. He I was okay, a year old for sure. He regressed later on. Yeah. None like, of our other kids ever mm, regressed. No, he slept so, the night at seven weeks, like the rest of them. No, it was a matter of getting out of bed, going over. Yeah, he does all know. that once they're once they're. Yeah. Like around seven weeks, they do not need to eat through the night anymore. My babies with my body and I'm not, like, you know, it's not the same for every kid. So I'm not, that's why I'm not teaching like a night weaning right. course or anything like that. Cause everybody's different. Um, but that's how it's been with my babies. And this fourth one obviously could be so totally different. I hope not, but, um, yeah. And so that's something that definitely is very, that's a really good tip though. Once they are, whatever age that is not eating through the night. If the dad can go over and when the baby's crying, you know, maybe the baby will get mad at first because it wanted to eat or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not full of answers either. But Josh is so much easier at falling back to sleep. Once I'm oh, awake, yeah. I cannot fall back to sleep for a long time. So then it's it's just this endless cycle of no sleep. Mm -hmm. Nope, I can go over, get the baby wrapped up in a blanket again and give it its milk or whatever and then just... Right back We're big sleep. swaddlers too, like we swaddle our babies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the love you as a couple share is so very beautiful and it's obvious for everyone to see the way you look at each other, the adoration, the love shines from your eyes. <laughs> I think they must have just watched our baby moon video. Like that's vacation Megan and Josh. There's not love shining from our eyes every minute of every day, that's for sure.
<laughs> I feel like it's so much, it is so fun. Like if you can afford it, swing it, find a babysitter or whatever and go on a vacation as a family, I mean, as a couple without your kids, mm -hmm. you're totally reminded again of who you yeah. really, like who you both really are. Like, oh yeah, we're not just parents. We're not just like the bill payers and the cooks and like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, we were people before this. Yeah, because it's so easy to, you've got your tasks for the day and, and, and you've got your responsibilities and stuff to get done and get these kids safely <laughs> and healthy through the day and, and it's like. Yeah, you're like in the practical box. Yeah. It's so hard to get into the like the romantic box or mm -hmm. like the, the yeah. cute and cuddly box or whatever. Yep. Um, yep. So, so going on little trips like that is so so nice, but it's, it's oh, not always easy to swing. Of course, you know, and it's probably the downfall of the the social media oh, influencer yeah. age is we see you see the good stuff, um, and there's a reason. I mean, obviously, it, every, we're not perfect. No one's perfect. At the end of the day, it's our job to be encouraging and to be uplifting and not to be, here's our bad points and throw that on camera and, yeah. and uh, that's not, that's not really, it's not helping us. It wouldn't be beneficial to anybody else to, 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 to anybody else and to us to show the, the times when things aren't going great, but uh, we do what we can. And I think like our downfall, which is we're very passionate people, is also mm -hmm. our upside too. It makes life fun, you know, whatever. So, I mean, whatever your downsides are, I'm sure there's an upside to it as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think we were both attracted to each other when we were younger, before we got married. And so that doesn't really, I mean, maybe it does. Does, does it go away for some people? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. It hasn't gone away yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At like, all. And I, I don't expect it to. Yeah, I definitely care about you more now than I did, you know, six months into marriage, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. he's the father of my kids. Good grief. But, yeah, no, I understand. It's not It's not always easy, easy to conjure up those, like, romantic feelings and stuff when you're so wrapped up in, like, real life. Even evenings, we should do better, like, doing little evening things instead of waiting till we can get a little trip in. Because they're not going to happen for a while. And I think we'll end on the top question. What is one thing that you two wanted at the beginning of marriage that ended up happening? That didn't end up happening, but now you're glad that it didn't happen. For me, I would say when we first got married, I had these notions of we were going to move into the city for like a couple years. I wanted to live in Lancaster <laughs> City so bad. I can't say I'm glad it didn't happen, but I mean, it made us the people that we are. And I would go into Lancaster City at least once or twice a week and just like it was my happy place. I would go running in there. I would... Mm -hmm. I would just spend time in the city, so I think I would have loved it. I think I would have, but once you have children, I felt like that window closed for me. Although we do have some friends that live in the city, um, I think it would yeah. be hard to move in. I see. I, I just there's there's almost nothing about the city that I really like. Yeah, I just married the wrong guy for it. So in another lifetime, <laughs> if I had married somebody else, maybe oh, that would have happened, but it wasn't supposed to. If I could have fun. my house, my cabin in the woods, I would live there. And be just fine. Well, that's like the retirement home. Yeah, like, I'm fine yeah. with that, like living in the woods when I'm old. Yeah. But I'm saying, I think it would have been fun to do something like that mm -hmm. in the first six yeah. years we were married or something like that. Um, but yeah, everything works out for a reason. This house was like literally a gift from God with the timing mm -hmm. of when we bought mm -hmm. it, the price we got it for, and it's suited all of our needs, the location. Got yourself a walking trail. Got everything you need. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. My mommy, right down the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mom oh man <laughs> something that didn't happen that we expected it to you know what it's funny it, it, expectations I, or goals like I don't live life that way which is probably not a great thing but like I'm not <laughs> I am not making a 10 year goal like I don't really have a vision like I'm, I want to raise my kids I want to have my house and my wife and I don't really have expectations of where I'm going to be in 10 years. Like, I'm going to do the best I can tomorrow, and we'll see where that leads, and we'll see what doors God opens. Like, I am i can't say I ever really have, like, these expectations of what I'm going to be doing in 10 years. But I think that's how you temper your disappointment for things that don't work out. You just don't have expectations. For me, the way I deal with disappointment yeah. is I just expect the worst. That way, if the second worst thing happens, well, at least it wasn't the worst thing. So I think it's better to live <laughs> it's, your way. It's definitely it, better to live your it's way. It's pretty bad to expect the worst. Cause, but I think it's even, I think like the whole thing of things that you would have liked to do or happen when you were getting married, you're thinking this is going to happen. We're going to have this many kids and like, or whatever. It's like, eh, whatever. 
I'll worry like one day at a time. But it's good to have goals, visions, and future. And I think that God gives some people very specific mm -hmm. callings and visions yeah, and stuff sure. too. Um, like YouTube was never on my radar when we got married. And it right. literally, it just happened. A door opened up and it happened. Yeah. And life has not been the same since. Mm -hmm. Actually, life is what it is because of YouTube in some ways, probably. The only vision, or like the only... Are you drinking my juice? <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> the only expectations that I have is that... I expect to shoot under par here eventually in my life. <laughs> okay, Josh. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who submitted a question. That was super fun. Um, I'm sure it'll be fun editing it back. And as I said at the beginning, check out Dime. I love them. And that discount will definitely help you out if you want to get started on your skincare journey with Dime. So thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Josh will be here in... He'll, you'll pop in. I'm somewhere. in and out. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Our next video is actually a baby watch video, so come back for that one. It's going to end in a baby. It's not filmed the whole way yet, so we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.